important. And of course, it's an eternal problem, basically, how we grapple with the question of suffering and how suffering many, many times, well, takes away uh, the peace from our soul. And that comes from, uh, um, again, a bad understanding. God is love. Therefore, if God is love, there mm -hmm. should be no suffering. Therefore, God doesn't love us. He's a cruel and mean God. And suffering, if we don't take care, it starts to question our faith. Paint, yes. the artist needs a medium, no? It's called, what well, paint. <laughs> well, photography needs, okay, you know, the capture of light. Yes, right. The only way that God has to write in our soul is the medium of suffering. So suffering suffering yes. that comes in your life, into your life. You know, it can come from God, or it can come from or another reason, or a combination of reasons, etc. Take it because this is an opportunity for you to grow and to identify yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Salve Maria, the podcast of the Heralds of the Gospel. Salve Maria, welcome to the podcast of the Heralds of the Gospel. And today we have a topic as advertised that is very appropriate for Lent because we're going to talk about suffering. And of course, we have our habitual panel here, Father Arthur Salve Maria. Salve Maria. Brother Justin Salve Maria. Salve Maria. So, of course, we welcome the uh, public that is watching, the audience that is watching, especially in Radio Maria Canada, the Catholic Voice in uh, your home, and also, of course, all the different public that follows us here in YouTube and the different places where you can also find the audio version of this podcast, either in Apple Podcasts or in Podbean or wherever you find your, your podcast, we can, you can find us there. So, Father, I think it's very, very important, this topic, and of course, it's very, very nice to have you on board, because many of our contemporaries, and, and of course, it's an eternal problem, basically, how we grapple with the question of suffering, and how suffering, many, many times, well, takes away uh, the peace from our soul. And suffering is also something that eventually, if we don't take care, it starts to question our faith. Because many of, our, of, of, of the people tend to think, well, what happens if God is such, an, such a loving God? Why does he then allow suffering? And also, in my case, especially when, you know, when you're in the middle of, of a heavy suffering, obviously, it's a time of trial. And so the idea is that this program will help all those who... Um, are there to understand more the question of suffering from God's perspective. Absolutely. I think it's a fascinating subject that has uh, accompanied mankind since Adam and Eve. Mm. Because of original sin, suffering came into our life. And uh, th the, what is important, it is uh, to try to understand the meaning of suffering. When you do something that you don't know why you're doing it, and you don't know the meaning, then it's terrible can be anything. It's absolutely terrible. But when you understand the meaning of something and you see that what you are doing, what you're going through, has a very high meaning, then you can bear it. Mm. So the, I, I think that we should focus today on trying to understand this, the, uh, the reason, the meaning of suffering in our lives. Mm. The very definition of patience is that. Exactly. Because patience Fatigue, consists... You know? To have, to have um, uh, the possibility of suffering for something. No? Or forbearance. Another forbearance, word. exactly. Forbearance. Suffering, the actually from Latin, is forbearance. It's to bear something for, for a reason. Hmm? And patience is that, when you understand the why you have exactly. to put up with a, with a degree of suffering that has a reason, that has a finality, and that helps us to practice patience. <laughs> exactly. So if God will not... Uh, have suffered himself then it will be more difficult to us for us to understand why we should suffer the uh, author of the book of hebrews underlines that very close mm -hmm. making that juxtaposition that because our lord suffered everything exactly. we suffer with him but he also gave us he opened this royal road in front of us the idea that jesus didn't suffer is bizarre, it's not true, but that's very important, it was very clear within the early church. So the book of, the he of Hebrews has that very clear. And it's nice because when you suffer, you suffer in two dimensions. You suffer for you, and you suffer for the others. Hmm? Our Lord Jesus Christ 
he obviously suffered for the others. He suffered for us. But we can ask ourselves, you know, if uh, he uh, would have tried to find a way of giving more glory to his father, of doing something more for his father, what will he do? Maybe to suffer. Mm. But the only thing that he could offer to his father... But he suffered in a manner which he dropped every drip of, wa of blood that was in his system. Exactly. came out. He, he, he strained himself. There wasn't anything more to give. So you see, it was for us, but also it was to give glory to his father, yes. to be able to offer. So he, he gave everything, absolutely everything that he had. But for us to visualize and understand God the Father, because sometimes we tend to either our poor catechization or our wrong vision, personal wrong vision, tends to uh, immediately associate God the Father with someone who, you know, is so severe that wants us to suffer. And that's not <laughs> true. <laughs> Correct? True. No. He wants to, to give us glory. He, go, he wants to give us a reward. And this is why we suffer. Mm -hmm. But we the problem su deeply, Father, is it, because, you know, it comes from Adam and Eve. I mean, exactly. God didn't want suffering on earth, no. but Adam and Eve opened the door to suffering, right? Willing to be eternal. Now they just opened the door to the contrary, you know, <laughs> for finite things, and then they, they close the door to eternity. And then what happens? The only medium that God has to write in souls now is suffering. And maybe the reason of original sin, of Eve saying yes to the devil, was because she didn't want to suffer. She didn't want to have that suffering of saying no to something that may look as, as something agreeable, something good, etc. So she was so much eager of having good for herself that she didn't want to suffer and say no. Was, uh, was in the so Genesis, was the fear of missing out <laughs> phenomena that was already present in the, in the Genesis. Exactly. In Genesis. Exactly. So the, 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 mm. the first <laughs> sin was a sin against suffering. Hmm? The first sin was somebody who didn't say, no, I don't want to suffer. I want to, to have what the devil wants to give me also. Mm. Listen, there's also a problem. And that comes from, uh, um, again, a bad understanding, um, which is the um, idea that God is love. Therefore, if God is love, there mm -hmm. should be no suffering. Um, and because there's suffering, therefore God doesn't love us. He's a cruel and mean God. Um, I have here a quote that's kind of interesting, which it says, The problem of reconciling human suffering with the existence of a God who loves us is only solvable so long as we attach the trivial meaning of the word, of the meaning of the word love. The exactly. problem isn't that God doesn't love us, it's that we don't understand what love is. Exactly. We attach the wrong meaning to love. We, and I mean this in the collective sense, w our major problem is that we look at love merely as the pass, passing, passionate um, thing instead of something which is sacrificial. We don't see it as something we have to give and suffer through. We see it as something that we take and we receive. Precisely. So where's our, that's, a, that's a very key problem that we have with our concept of God and our concept of our society, right? That element of suffering for self and for other, that means I've got to suffer for someone. And that, I, that I'm not interested in. I want to have joy and happiness my whole life, and I'm not suffering. There's no cross in my world. When we talk about brokenness, no? This is also another broken aspect in our, in our lives after original sin, right? The, the real notion of love is broken too. Of course, exactly. So the way that you can prove that you love is by suffering the proof that you can give. So uh, God allowing suffering in our, our lives is giving us the opportunity to us, for us to prove that we love Him and the others, that we, and, and ourselves also, because we suffer also for our sanctification and we suffer for the good of the others. If, we, if uh, there will be no suffering in life, then, you know, <laughs> there will be no charity, no nothing. Everybody will be just uh, looking after himself and, and the others, you know, that, that's uh, something else that they want to know. Absolutely. So suffering is essential. There, there is no society. There is no life in society that works without suffering. Mm. You know, if you look at the question of our Lord's suffering in the Garden of Gethsemane, his tremendous moral suffering he goes through there, um, we end up with 
various examples of people that we can be like, right? Um, we can be a character like our Lord, who suffers, you know, sweating blood mm -hmm. to the last drop. We can be John, who in front of that suffering ran away, naked. Exactly. We can be Peter, impulsive, but when it really counts, we flee the Lord. Mm. We could be Judas, who inflicts that pain. Exactly. Right? And those elements, those characters, we should reflect on ourselves and ask how many times in our lives have I been like a John to my neighbor or to the Lord, hopefully not, but um, a Judas a Peter mm -hmm. or what mm -hmm. have you. And that could actually help us grow because the royal road is suffering. Precisely. So as our founder says that suffer, you have to suffer. Now you can suffer in two ways or you suffer with love or you suffer without love. <laughs> so if you love and you, you prove your love by suffering, then your suffering will be transforming a reward. And then you are happy because you're doing something that you want to do, even though it is painful and difficult and, and hard for you. But you're, you're doing this with happiness. I heard it once put that uh, suffering was sort of like the eighth sacrament. Yeah. It activates exactly. baptism. It activates contrition in our uh, confessions. It activates our Eucharistic devotions. It activates all the sacraments. Once we suffer, then everything has a whole new level of value. Of course. So we suffer because we love. Hmm? If we don't love, so somebody who doesn't have a God, who doesn't believe in God, he can do offer anything to God, he will... Uh, he will not want to suffer. He will be selfish, and he will. Be, he, uh, he's, uh, still, he will have to suffer, but he will have she. no meaning. <laughs> he or she. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, but you know, it's applicable. It's inclusive. It's inclusive. Because, it's inclusive because we also have our lady, and our lady, she, you know, she is also a model of suffering when it comes yes. Not yes. to there's it. An, exactly. Yeah. There's another problem with love, which is that if God is love, He is by definition something more than mere kindness. We don't understand love. We look at kindness, we look at it as kindness, we look at it as good manners, being well behaved. But is that really love? Just because you're nice, is that love? And I think it goes back to what we were talking about before, which is that the core problem in this problem of pain is we don't understand what love is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that love hurts. Of course, no, of course. If it doesn't hurt, it's not real love because you're not giving anything. But what we're talking about is also impossible without the grace of God, right, Father? Because uh, when we talk about exactly. the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right, mm -hmm. that are so deep and profound, I mean, it's completely superhuman or beyond humanity to accept suffering unless God gives us these phenomenal gifts, no, which are piety, fortitude, uh, even wisdom, uh, and all those are super important. And we need to ask God for those gifts because otherwise we may also look like those ancient Greeks, you know, the Stoics. Okay, let's go and put up with suffering. Uh, yeah, but the, the really um, Christian meaning... Of course, because then you're suffering for the love of yourself. You want to prove yourself, you're able to, <laughs> to do more than the others. No, this is not a love. Monsignor mm. Jean-Claude always quotes Musio Shevola. No? Yeah, for, exactly. for those who are not familiar with his story, he was a Roman officer and he falls prisoner and so he stands in front of the other pagan emperor or whatever and then he goes and says, look, and then he puts his hand right on the fire and lets it burn, right? And he says, Rome has many more officers than myself. Exactly. But he, he, he lets literally his uh, um, his hand his arm, burn and doesn't move anything exactly. and then unflinching, you know, just, just goes. That's a way of suffering, but I don't think it has anything to do with gaining heaven. No, of course not. Is, is suffering just to to show that he's proud and that, uh, that, that he believes in himself. The glorification of will. <laughs> but you know what's interesting is that you're saying Stoicism, which had a lot of impact on the early Christians, but one that was, uh, that was terrible was Epicurus. No. Epicurus, his whole idea was that we have to avoid suffering, cost what it may. Exactly. And what is fascinating about Epicurus is that we look at Epicurean or Epicurus as 
the fine dining and, and the foodies, and foodies, what have you. But that's not what he wanted. He said, avoid pain at all costs. So you don't get involved in politics because there's pain. Mm -hmm. You don't eat too much because that could cause indigestion. You don't eat too little because that can will cause pain. <laughs> Anything. And it got to such a point, his successors, his followers, that they would avoid marriage because children would cause pain. Of course. But this is the antithesis of a Christian life, to flee the cross at every opportunity Absolutely. conceivable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Our society is full of, uh, of that. No? I mean, people run away from suffering because they think that in itself suffering is is bad and openly Christianity and especially Catholicism, when well, when well, uh, what practiced. lived and practiced, is becoming completely countercultural. Of course, mm. exactly. Well, Father, I would so propose that we go for a little uh, pause here for some uh, announcements, commercials, things that we always are, are announcing here in the, in the channel, and then we come back with the notion and perspective of the saints about suffering, mm. because there are many schools about suffering here. And, you know, you have Padre Pio, you have yeah. St. John of the Cross, you have all kinds of saints. And stay until the end, because this is very, very important, and it's going to help you not only to improve your Lent, but also to understand suffering in a better manner. So we go back, we come back in a moment. Salve Maria! I'm Father Ryan Murphy of the Heralds of the Gospel. And I'm delighted to extend an invitation to each and every one of you. In the midst of our busy lives, it's crucial to take a moment of reflection, of solace, and of prayer. That's why I would like to personally invite you to join us every day at 3 p.m. for a special and powerful devotion, the Divine Mercy Chaplet. The Divine Mercy Chaplet is a beautiful prayer that embodies the boundless compassion of our Lord. It's a time to come together as a community regardless of where we are, and lift up our intentions, our hopes, and even our burdens to the heart of Jesus. Imagine all around the world, countless voices uniting in prayer at this very hour. It's a moment of connection, of spiritual unity, and of seeking God's mercy in a troubled world. So, Mark your calendars, set your alarms, and make a commitment to join us each day at 3 p.m. Tune in and experience the transformative power of the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Let this be a sanctuary of peace amidst the noise of life. And thank you for being a part of our Heralds Canada YouTube channel. Together, let's embark on this journey of faith, hope, and mercy. I'm looking forward to praying with you every day at 3 p.m. May God's love and mercy shine upon you always. And until we meet again, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're back here with the question of suffering. And so, Father, you were going to explain to us a little bit more about uh, uh, how to suffer properly, right? Well, let's take an example. Let, let's take the case a uh, um, sublime case which is the Calvary hmm? uh, at that moment there were three people suffering our Lord Jesus Christ was on the cross in the center and he had a thief on one side and another thief on the, on the other the three were suffering hmm? but the meaning of their suffering was completely different and the 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 um, the usefulness of the suffering was completely different one from the other because Jesus Christ was suffering for the good of mankind. He was offering himself in order to pay our debts. We had a debt, somebody had to pay it, and he said, this is me, I'm going to pay the debt. And the good thief will recognize that yes, we have a debt, and he will be thankful to our Lord Jesus Christ. And he will, will, uh, will say, Look, my, my little suffering, I really deserve, but he doesn't deserve. I, do, I only want that you remember me, you know, when you are into your kingdom, because you are a king. You, know, you are a king that's suffering for us, and therefore you have a kingdom, and I want to be with you. I love you. I want to be with you. And I deserve this suffering too, because I have done things that were not... He accepts the suffering in his life, and he offered, and he died happily. 
he, because our Lord Jesus Christ told him, look, you're going to be today with me in paradise. So, you know, he was the, the happiest man on earth. Nevertheless, he was the one who was suffering terribly. But on the other side of the cross, you had that somebody who didn't want to suffer. He didn't want to recognize that he had a debt, that this man was good and he was suffering for him, that he had to pay his debt. He didn't want to recognize anything. He just wanted to enjoy life. And now this is happening to him. Tragedy. And he, tragedy. He it wasn't his fault. No, it wasn't his fault. He doesn't understand why. Never his fault. Uh, exactly. He never did anything that could anything eventually wrong? end up on this. He was a good person. And, and he's suffering like this. Why? What an injustice. Absolutely. <laughs> God they is found, guilty. They found him with blood dripping off his hands and a knife there, but still it was total nope. injustice. And maybe wherever he is. No, but no, he had a good heart. He had a good heart. <laughs> uh, so he, um, he didn't want to open himself to, to understand that uh, there was a, a reason. And instead of dying in this terrible... Um, uh, Distress and revolt. Revolt and uh, confusion and uh, meaningless of his suffering. Nihilist. Yeah, nihilist, nihilist complete situation. nihilist. Exactly. Complete darkness, complete, complete materialism. Darkness, yeah. It's terrible. And, and he's dying. And he was really dying. Hmm? And our Lord Jesus Christ didn't say anything to him. But well, he was also cursing our Lord. Exactly, his he, was. Were he was. Our Lord, he our was. Lord doesn't respond. Doesn't respond. Silence. It is beautiful. It's the last act of charity of our Lord. You know, he didn't make it worse. He didn't make it worse because he could, could have reprimanded him. Cursed you know? him. Imagine Christ on the cross cursing him to eternal flames. Right there, bang. Get exactly. Lost. So, so this man is n not saying anything. He's no. he's not uh, um, condemning me. Hmm? He could have, have said, he, he's so good, no, that uh, uh, I, I must be wrong, I, I, must, I must ask forgiveness, etc. But he, he didn't want to ask forgiveness. On a side note, uh, we have to also to re recall what historians explain about the crucifixion. Because for a Roman citizen, the word cross and crucifixion mm -hmm. was out of the language. Because no. it was such a horrendous Suffering. death, a uh, kind of death, that any Roman citizen would not even pronounce the word cross mm. because it was associated with things that, of course, in 2000 years of Christianity, we are somehow habituated to, to well, see our Lord glorious in the cross. crosses on top of, of crowns and churches and mm -hmm. buildings. Of course. But okay. at that time, no. But, but, but let's, let's also visualize the, the raw uh, no, of image of the crucifixion. Mm. <laughs> Shocking. It was extreme. It was something absolutely uh, uh, terrible. And uh, yeah. we are talking about the redempting, you no, know, um, value of, of suffering, right? Yes. And the, and this is very very interesting for Lent, of course. But there is also another another dimension of it. I don't know if you if you would like to explain a little bit, Father, because it's also when suffering is understood as a path to holiness. Of and course. there are some examples, no? like St. John of the Cross, mm, who are mystics and see uh, suffering as a way of not only, say, uh, cleanse our life, but also as a way of uniting ourselves with the of sufferings course. of Jesus, right? Exactly. This is beautiful. Mm -hmm. When somebody not only accepts the suffering that, that life gi uh, brings to you, because actually, you know, there are many causes of suffering can be God directly, but if not, it can be any circumstances in life. It can yeah, be in a neighbor. broken creation too. I mean, exactly. this is... Uh, yeah, but original sin. Disease enters into our world through original sin, and that causes most of the heartache in that sense. Of course. But when somebody has the possibility to choose between having a decent life with less suffering and accepting a more difficult life with more suffering for the good of the others and to sanctify himself, well then, you know, this is something very serious. A little little story, no? St. Maximilian Kolbe, when he's very small, he did something completely wrong, no? And then the mother was distressed. I don't know what what was because the historians don't, don't detail much. Mm -hmm. But the mother says, Maximilian, well, well no, not Maximilian, but <laughs> what are we going to do with you, my child? And then, uh, at a certain moment, he runs, goes to a church, and in the church, a lady appears to him and offers him, as you say, Father, 
two crowns, and one is the okay. crown of uh, virginity, the crown of you know chastity, and the other one is the crown of martyrdom. And he chooses both. But it's what they're saying, you no, know, because it was on him to yes. be able to choose, to choose. that <coughs> crown of thorns that, that that was going to be later on his 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 martyrdom, but also his life because he had a life of suffering as well. Of course, a lot, a lot, and he and and, and he died in a terrible way. You know, and, um, so the, uh, the concentration camp. So the um, uh, to accept more suffering than what God uh, asks you. You know, this is almost divine. Mm -hmm. This is almost divine. This, this, you know, um, this makes the person much more closer to God. Her, uh, her dignity goes up tremendously because uh, she is accepting. To um, to offer his life as a martyr, for example, mm? he renounces to his life. Look, uh, you, if you burn a little bit of incense, you know you can live for for years uh, more, etc. No, I prefer to uh, to die. I prefer to suffer, and uh, not to offend the Lord Jesus Christ, and to offer this as a sacrifice for my conversion and the conversion of the others. Mm? This year, before Lent began, we had a series of martyrs. You have Saint Agatha. You yeah, have Saint exactly. um, Lucy. You have you have a Saint Paolo uh, Miki. Paolo Miki, and that's exactly their situation. Mm, yeah. they were uh, mostly the Roman martyrs. They were offered. They were nobles. Mm -hmm. Just a teaspoon of incense. All this bad goes away. Mm. Everything goes away. All this bad goes away. Okay. But no, and they tortured these women. The women in particular were tortured. They were the most hideous things done to them. Exactly. There is a church that in, in Rome is St. Stephen's Church. And it's, it's the own, one of the few that is round, actually. It's mm -hmm. one exception. Mm -hmm. It comes from the Roman times. And when you, when you sit down in the church, you see endless groups of tourists that come in. But the, the, something that uh, defines this church is the fact that you have ancient paintings depicting specifically each and every torture the early Christians would suffer. Wow. No? And so it's, it's fantastic. If you sit across the door and you watch the groups of tourists coming, and that tells you know, how, how we are sometimes. No? Um, people come in, look, turn around and leave. It's and really no group <laughs> lasts more than five minutes because you know, it's, <laughs> it's, so it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> reminding no, what, what Brother Justin was saying. No, it's, it's just, but it, it's in detail. You know, the Romans used some claws made of uh, iron and they would really uh, rake. rake a person, right? Mm -hmm. But it's all there so people can see. And <laughs> immediately, n no but one I'm stays. I'm not interested in that. Of and course. that's the interesting thing because those are real facts, these are he real heroes. And there was very little stomach for that. But people are more than willing to watch horror films, which is not real. Of course. Yeah. But they'll watch it for hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, but it shows that our nature uh, is repulsive to suffering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it means that God made us to be happy. He made us, you know, to, to be to be good and to be to be full of happiness and joy, etc. But because of sin, then we have to suffer in order to pay for that sin. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful analogy too, no? Uh, the saints comment that, they say, okay, if you're gonna um, paint, the artist needs a medium, no? It's called, what, well, paint. <laughs> mm -hmm. If uh, if a sculpture wants to, you know, to, to go and produce something, he needs also uh, stone. Mm -hmm. And if you are going to produce, I don't know, another texture with another different, well, photography needs, okay, you know, the capture of light. Mm -hmm. The only way that God has to write in our soul is the medium of suffering. Suffering, beautiful. That's how God writes in our soul what, what we didn't write, <laughs> what we should have written and we didn't do it. <laughs> there's, a, there's another author who puts it this way, God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pains. It is his megaphone to rouse beautiful. a deaf world. Exactly. Exactly. So when we're deaf. Mm -hmm. God's trying to reach out to us, and He finds ways to do so. Of course, because this suffering on earth that God asks us, you know, here and there, etc., is nothing compared to the 
the real suffering that we deserve because we offended an infinite God and we deserve an infinite uh, suffering. And we're incapable of it. Exactly. So he, has, he, he only asks us for a limited suffering instead of an infinite suffering. So it's mercy. And someone would also place this, this uh, objection further, no? Because, okay, in the end of the story, Adam and Eve lived how many thousands of years ago, and we never, never met them. Uh, some people even may say, I don't even like apples or, or any fruits. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, w why do I have to have a part in all this story like that Adam and Eve committed? Like Bernadette of Lourdes, she, she didn't like apples. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then what do we do, right? Um, but, but no, because unfortunately, the act permeated so much the human soul that we have the same tendencies as they had when they committed the sin. So the, the tendency of hiding, no? uh, Adam... Yes goes and as soon as he, as he sees God, oh, I was ashamed mm -hmm. and I was afraid and I, I hid myself. Mm -hmm. But what we, do we do when we commit sins? Mm -hmm. Oh no, we never met Adam and Eve, but we react in the same manner. Mm -hmm. We hide, we don't want to recognize it, we point at others maybe, but also we say, oh no, no, I, I was afraid and, uh, and uh, I didn't want to see you. No? Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's there. So to say I didn't meet Adam and Eve is fine, we didn't. But we have the same reaction. Exactly. So it shows how real they are. How real. How real they are, of course. St. Francis de Sales has an interesting line which he says, uh, Do not lose your inner peace for anything whatsoever, even if your whole world seems lost. So in that valley of tears that we live in, this mm -hmm. painful world, don't lose that interior peace. R you know, rest in the arms of the Lord. Of course. And there we can find peace. This connects us with adjusting directly on to the next dimension of suffering, which is when we suffer with trust in divine providence. Like, mm -hmm. for instance, and Faustina Kowalska mm -hmm. uh, commented, no, that we suffer, but we suffer trusting in uh, in our Lord Jesus sure. Christ. Sure, exactly. So uh, oh, the, the psalm, no, David, that regardless of wherever you are, you can be in the in the uh, profundity of the valley of suffering. I will still trust in God because I know that uh, He is love and He's going to take me out of this. The interesting thing is that that was written right after He lost His Son yeah. as a punishment for yeah. His sin. Yeah. It's interesting because a lot of people think, of it, "Oh, He must have written that when He was at the peak of His happiness." No. He was in a very deep, dark of course. Uh, point of suffering, and he shows his absolute trust in God. Mm. That's wonderful. Father, can we recommend people during Lent to read the Psalms? <laughs> of course. The penitential That's Psalms? The, the, the Psalm 50, 51 uh, of David is beautiful. If you, if you analyze, you know, uh, phrase by phrase, it's so, so profound, you know. Because uh, he's someone who sinned, and he's yeah. someone who knows and that he's he was very wrong. human. The, the psalm is very human, so it really applies to you. Um, I sin, my sin is in front of me, you know, my conscience tells me, etc. But then you come and you, you make me more white, whiter than, than the, uh, uh, than the snow, snow etc. So it's, it's, it's fantastic. Another one also is interesting, if you look at it, it's Isaiah, the sorrowful, the sorrowful servant. The prophecies about the, su the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, th those aspects how he was going to be beaten and, and, and flogged and tr mistreated. Because a lot of times we think, no, I'm good, therefore everything should be fantastic. No, it's because you are good, maybe, that you're going to follow the, ro the royal road that Jesus followed. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Through, all the way to Calvary. You want to imitate him? Then accept suffering. So simple, no? <laughs> so we it's shouldn't so be overwhelmed and actually no. anguished by suffering. Of course. It's uh, whatever suffering that comes in your life, into your life, take it naturally. Take it, you know, it can come from God or it can come from some for another reason or a combination of reasons, etc. Take it because this is an opportunity for you to grow and to identify yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. And He will make this suffering uh, be transformed in a tremendous reward. This uh, will give you uh, peace. It will give you uh, tranquility of, uh, of soul in any circumstance in which you, you may be. And we know that people are watching us and maybe some are in a tremendous 
difficulties some maybe you know or just lost somebody very very dear in their lives or something is going wrong or their children they're, they're taking bad direction etc and they're suffering because of this so well trust offer this suffering and uh, and offer it up no and um, that our lord will transform this suffering in a great blessing for you so with this we can give our, our blessing to all our audience the lord be with you and with your spirit and may almighty god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit amen, amen.